Ghost in the Shell, it really doesn't need an introduction. The franchise has managed to keep running since 1997, grabbing the attentions of both anime and non-anime watchers around the world. The series has been an influence for many artists, directors, and writers, and has been cited as one of the greats. Surprisingly though, there hasn't been much in the way of great Ghost in the Shell games, which is surprising given the amount of potential a Ghost in the Shell game could have if put in the right hands. However, there is one game that managed to exceed the expectations of being a licensed game, the very first Ghost in the Shell game, released for the Sony PlayStation in 1997. The first game was developed by EXACT, the same people who brought you the Jumping Flash games. Their 1997 outing Ghost in the Shell controls infinitely better than their Jumping Flash titles, and honestly, I wonder what a Jumping Flash 3 would have felt like with this control style. Despite not having analog control, Ghost in the Shell is surprisingly smooth to play, especially when you effectively use the strafe buttons. Being able to move across walls and ceilings is honestly a blast in this game, and doing circles around the enemy with the strafe buttons just hits the dopamine so damn hard. It's even better when peppering the enemy with bullets, missiles, or nuking their position with a goddamn grenade. The fact that this game hasn't been ported to newer consoles or even PC is goddamn criminal. It's not as easy to control as, say, Mario 64, but when you get used to it, it becomes almost second nature. It stands above a lot of games from that era that were really rough to control, a la Tomb Raider and whatnot. I can imagine an analog version of the game controlling so so much better than the non-analog version, but unfortunately that never happened. The story is just there to connect levels, but it is written by the original manga author Shiro Masamune, so if you're a manga purist, there you go. Hmm, you'll have to prove to us that you've got some guts. Well, I suppose you're average. In a real combat situation, you'll have to put out extra. I'm surprised someone can show an impressive fight even though he's been on the beat. Well, excuse me for not being flashy. Do it wow. Again, this time Already know this stuff? Huh? Oh. Mm. You don't play any of the core cast in the game, but you play a rookie in Section 9 who is only referred to in cutscenes. You won't be saying anything, but you will be doing everything. The game's visuals have aged surprisingly well thanks to not focusing on hyper-realistic human beings. We all love Metal Gear Solid and Tomb Raider, but boy have those models aged like milk. Some missions would take me two to three times to complete, especially those with a timer attached. I began to adopt a speedrunning mentality when playing the game, memorizing enemy positions and finding optimal routes throughout the levels. It's honestly really fun when you put that, you know, mentality into it. The game's difficulty is fair enough. Every time I beat a level, I feel like I've earned it and it wasn't given to me. 
Near the end, I began to lose my mind with the platforming sections for a game that was never designed for them, and uh, it's one of the few blemishes on this one. Mission 5 arguably feels the closest to the 1995 film, being in a rundown part of the city chasing after a perp with thermo optic camouflage. You can even follow them by their footsteps alone as water splashes up from every step they take. It's honestly a nice little detail and I really like it. The game really incentivizes going through a level as quickly as possible. And I'm honestly surprised that there isn't a really big speedrunning community around this game given how it perfectly lends itself to it. If the game had caught on back in the day with the speedrunning community, I could see it being as big as GoldenEye or Mario 64. I really hope it does pick up that speedrunning audience one day, because honestly, it's really fun. And I really can't stress that enough, this game is just fun to the core. The game is a nice package of an hour of fun with challenge and lots of replayability. When was the last time you played The Last of Us for fun? Yes, Ghost in the Shell isn't a multi-hour game, but it's not trying to be. It is an arcade experience brought to the home, which was all the rage in the 4th and 5th generation, which died by the end of the 5th generation, unfortunately. For the sheer fun factor alone, I highly recommend this game to anyone who is curious. That is all, ladies and gentlemen, toodaloo, and see you all next time.